you were saying, well, um, there's a distortion when you draw up close. I just want to share that, that conversation. It's not a conversation that we have a lot, but it's really true. When you sit up close, there's a distortion. The things that are closest to you, like when you shoot with the camera, are larger than their proportional relationship um, tends to be and the way we sort it out in our minds. But um, if, someone, if someone draws from that distance and they draw that distortion, there is a tendency to defend it by saying um, that they're just dealing with their visual vision when in fact all they're really doing is copying the visual field. All right, I want to be really clear about that. I mean copying the visual field and they're not using any discretion about um, what's really going on. Instead they copy the distortion and that means they're not making any choices. Now a camera does that, right? If you get a camera, you look through the camera, you'll see that the camera makes no choices. It's got no input when it comes to that, right? The only choices that get to be made um, are from the person behind the camera, and, um, and that also depends on how many you know, buttons and knobs and whistles you, you can choose from. But let's just say a, a person shooting that close doesn't want that distortion. Well, they can go back to a kind of medium range, right? They can shoot from a medium range, and it'll work fine. If they go way back and do telephoto, things have a tendency to flatten out. Flatten out, right? So you, you don't want to be too far back because things absolutely go flat, which is also a visual distortion, or too far forward. Right? So that's really, really interesting, that. Um, what it does is it puts all the choices in your hands. And it means that choices are important to make, All right? So was there anything else we kind of, did I kind of cover it? Or? Well, if you were doing measurements, I mean, you're trying to take measurements, site size measurements, it's never going to work from close. Really a good point. That's really a good. Yeah, if you're doing site size measurements, which a lot of people rely upon, and a lot of teachers teach almost exclusively site size. Um, site size includes, by the way, um, measuring left to right and and top to bottom, right? It, it's basically flat plane measurement. It's not around. Um, it's simply across and from top to bottom. So if you're measuring like that and you're relying upon that to tell you the truth, what happens when you're too close? You're, you're relying on distortion as fact. So that's a, that's a really good point. Um, so when you are up close, you have the advantage of seeing things that may be difficult on your eyes from a little further back. But you do need to compensate. OK? Um, it's the same thing as copying something that may not be appealing for your particular view. Like if something is like creating a tangent because of where you're sitting, and you just copy that, it doesn't make any sense in the same way that you would copy a distortion. Absolutely, absolutely. So, right, right away, we're talking about how important choices are, right? So it makes sense to be thinking about things and not just to copy. That's just talking about dealing with the visual field. So we're actually interpreting the visual field and making choices about it in terms of what we know is good design. Um, and design that doesn't work very well or confusing design. We're making choices about, well, all sorts of things. But most important of all, if you're simply copying the visual field, you're not really asking yourself what's going on, what's the story, what's the physical dynamic. So there's no physical energy if you're just copying edges and so on. And there's no internal story except what you can, you know, kind of gleam from 
that particular kind of an approach, whatever could be captured by the um, by the automatic mechanism. You got a question? No, actually, I was going to add what you're saying. In terms of, if you're just copying visually, you lose all sense of accent. You sure do. You don't have that. Now. You don't have just. You don't have any of that because you have no sense of. That's right. You don't know where anything is in space. It's interesting that some teaching teach teachings teach gesture and then they move right into sight size or flat plane uh, measurement. It's like they don't even belong together. You know what I mean? There's, there's no marriage between the two. It's one and the other. But, what we, but, a, but, a, full, but a full comprehensive um, study and training would, would place those two as simply, simply facets of a much larger study. So then you begin to see how they do relate. To me, sight size, that is measuring this way and this way, um, is something you use to augment um, a sort of a free-flowing from the gut approach to drawing. That includes conceptual concepts, conceptual ideas such as going around the form, finding axis, volume, uh, story, um, the sen sense or feeling of what something's happening as, as being even more dominant than shape itself. In a way, <clears throat> finding the right shape to express the feeling is more important than simply finding good shape. Good shape, good design, but if it expresses more than simply that, then uh, it gives us dimension. I'm sure there are people that would argue that point. There's a lot to defend when you've invested your whole life in one way of learning something. So you can jump into the uh, conversation at any point. If you've got any questions about anything we've been uh, talking about in classes up till now, now's a good time to, to um, bring them out. Um, on the other hand, if this is a short conversation, that's okay with me. Um, the more drawing we get in, the better. Um, is there anything that's on your mind? D let me start this way. How, how much, how, did you get a chance to model? You didn't get, you didn't get a chance? So who modeled? Just you? Yeah, she got here like Oh, okay. Well, we'll give you another chance. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't deprive you of Okay. Yeah, another thing that I'm feeling from sitting here, because I'm not accustomed to sitting here. I don't, it's just like watching a film. If you're going to sit in the front row, you're losing the composition. You'll never see the real composition of the image. And it's like when people go to the museum and they look at the artwork like this on the wall. You know, you're, you're not taking in the whole picture, the whole mood. You're losing a lot of that because you're busy scanning, panning, scanning your <coughs> head around looking for body parts. Oh, uh, there is that. Yeah. There is that. However, I, I, I do think that there's a, a, a really good challenge by working close and working far. If you work close, then your composition may be more abstract mm -hmm. because you can't see everything. So it, it might be more interesting in that you begin to see edges and lines and, and tunnels and turns and hills and gullies and things like that, and it begins to... Uh, present itself in a different way. You can crop or make your composition tighter, closer, mm -hmm. so that um, your composition doesn't include the whole figure, but it includes the, the local territory. And the local territory becomes the whole. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to, to approach it. I think there's a value to that. Because ultimately, I think it's important for us to see the figure not just as a creature, but to understand the abstract characteristics. For instance, that's one of the things that, that's so incredible about Cezanne, is that he went where everyone went, and they were drawing things. And, and then eventually, they were not just drawing things that had density and weight and a solidity and form. Um, but new concepts came in, such as light. Oh, we're not drawing form at all. We're drawing bouncing light, light that bounces back to the eye. Well, in a certain sense, he's saying, yes, but this is only one point of view. And he started to shatter things into 
um, abstract relationships, relationships of movement. So the edge of a tree might suddenly uh, split or shift. So the way the eye darts around is it doesn't, you know, it's collecting images and creating that hole. So in some respects he was interested in showing that we're, we're constantly viewing things from di in different ways and from different directions. The experience of a picture can have that. What well, might that be like? You know what I mean? So in a certain sense, I don't think there was anyone really before him that really approached it quite like that. And of course, and from really strongly, a strong perspective, you could say that he's the father of 20th century art. If um, Pissarro was the father of um, Impressionism, and by the way, they were buddies, they painted together, um, he was the father of yet the next generation. Picasso, Brock, all those people that started out in the early 20th century. So, uh, yeah, really, really interesting how the eye perceives the thing. But when you start thinking about it, and when you start to bring in um, what you're thinking into the evaluation of where you're going to go with your story, it changes what you might want to say from, that was noisy. <laughs> it's all right, just leave it for a moment. Um, it changes, it just, it, it changes the game from simply drawing images that are flat into creating, creating um, uh, stories with depth. Con conceptual ideas become, in many respects, much more interesting than simply copying an item like a camera does. I, I'm not... Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to say, don't do anything photographic. Because if you do it in the right way, it can be strong and, and have a strong, strong impression on the viewer. But if it's just done as a matter of routine, it's, it's not going to have, it's not going to go very far. But if it's done with conviction and strength, and maybe enlarged, or done in such a way like, uh, in ways that we haven't quite seen before, like enlarging, for instance. If you do someone's portrait and you do it three times the size of a head, um, it's a little startling. If you do it smaller, it doesn't seem to have much impact, because we're always drawing figures smaller then. You know the sculptor that does the extra huge yeah, figures. Like yeah. Um, so there like that. So, I mean, what we're trying to do is present each other with views that we haven't seen before, images that we haven't seen before. It could be a common, a common item, it could be a human being. And um, it can be startling when we're, we're presented with a new view of a common, what we consider to be a common experience of an object or a person. Uh, okay, any, any, any other thoughts or questions? Then I'm going to let you go with this. No drawing tonight. Okay, is that all right with you? No drawing by me tonight. No demo. All you guys. You're on your own. Okay. Thank you.